Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about swapping in Linux again, but this time we're going to be talking about using Zswap and ZRAM and the differences between them and when you would want to use them. Starting with ZRAM because it's the easiest to describe, ZRAM by itself is not a swap or a swap device. Um, ZRAM is actually a compressed block device that resides completely in memory. So you can use it for other things besides swap. You can put your temp files in there or any other files that you like. But if you do use it for swap, it allows you to completely remove your on-disk swap and have it all in RAM. Now, if you're thinking this sounds silly, why would I want to put my swap in memory? How does that help me to free up memory? It's because, like I stated, it's a compressed block device. So anything that you put in there is automatically compressed. So say you have about five megabytes of memory that needs to be swapped out. Instead of being swapped to disk, it can be compressed down to maybe, say, one megabyte and then placed into that compressed block device. And the compressed block device, when you create it, you can allocate, say, half a gig to it but it's dynamically allocated. So it's not going to take up all that space in RAM unless it's actually needed and used. All right, so now that we know what ZRAM is, let's go ahead and get it set up. So the ZRAM module is controlled by systemd, so there's no need for a FSTAB entry. And since everything is already installed out of the box, at least here on Ubuntu server, we only need to create a few files and then modify one and then reboot and we'll be up and running. So let's go ahead and get started with that. The first thing we're going to do is create a new file. So we're going to sudo vim etsy uh, module slash load.d and then we're going to call it zram.conf. And then in here, we're going to enter ZRAM. And then we are going to write it out. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new file again. So we're going to use sudo vim. And this is going to be an Etsy mod probe. And then call it zram.com. And in here, we have to define the number of device, devices. So we're going to put in. Oops, we're going to put in options, ZRAM, and then we're going to put in num underscore devices, and then equals one. We're going to write that out. And then the next thing we need to do is sudo bam. It's going to be Etsy and udev, and then we're going to go into rules slash D, and we're going to create a new file, call it 99 slash zram dot rules. And in here, we have to add a couple parameters. We need to name the device. We need to give it the size and then tell system D to control it. So we're going to insert a kernel equals equals zram zero and then comma adder uh, curly bracket, disk size, and then we'll give it a half a gig of RAM, and then tag, and system D. And that looks correct, so we will write that out. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create a, a systemd unit file. So in order to do that, we are going to do sudo uh, vim, and then we're going to do etsy systemd system, and then we'll call it zram.service. And in order to make this simple, I will just go ahead and copy and paste this into here. And I'll have this in the description so you don't have to copy it out. And then we will write that. And then we are going to sudo systemctl enable zram. 
And now that that's done, all we have to do is reboot our machine. All right, now that the server is rebooted, we can go ahead and run the swap on tac tac show command and take a look at our swap files. We can see that we have a new swap file under slash dev zram zero. It's a partition, half a gig of RAM, and the priority is negative three. It's great that it's there, but it's not great that it has a lower priority than the swap file that's on disk because that means that the kernel won't actually start using it until the swap file on disk is already full. So that doesn't help us at all. So in order to fix this, we can go back into that systemd unit file that we created earlier. So we'll sudo vim etsy uh, systemd system, and then if we can type correctly, zram.service. We're going to come here to this line that says uh, swap on. We will insert and we're going to add a parameter to it. So tack p and then 5 to give it a priority of 5. Right quick. And then we can reload the daemon or we can reboot. And I'll just reboot. Now that the server has rebooted, we can take a look again with our uh, swap on tack tack show command. And we can see that the priority is now set to 5. So now when the kernel needs to swap, it will swap to our compressed block device first. And then only once that's full, will it start swapping to the disk. Next, we're going to take a look at zswap, which is my preferred implementation. So as opposed to zram, which takes the place of a traditional swap file if you want it to, and it blindly sends everything that is destined to the swap file to zram, zswap does it more intelligently. So ZRAM, or ZSwap, sorry, uses an in-kernel cache for swap pages. And when it sends pages to the ZSwap, it will first attempt to compress them. And if it doesn't compress, or if it doesn't compress well, then instead of sending it to the ZSwap to the in-kernel cache, it will instead write it out to disk. So it does require an on-disk swap file. Um, the other nice thing about the zswap is that it does um, manage the warm and cold swap uh, pages. So if you have old stale swap pages that have been sitting in memory for a long time and haven't been used, it will swap those out and it will send it to the disk and only leave the warm pages in RAM. So it kind of works like a right behind cache. To see if zswap is already enabled, we can cat. Uh, sys modules, uh, zswap, and then parameters enabled. And it's going to return a Boolean. So n is for no, and y is for yes. So enabling it is very easy. So if you just want to test it at runtime and you don't want it to be permanent, um, first we need to switch to our root user. And we can echo 1 into that same file. So sys modules zswap parameters enabled. And now it's enabled. So if we cat it out again, so sys modules zswap parameters enabled, you can see that it's now enabled. And technically, that's all you need to do. But as soon as you reboot your computer, it's going to go away. So if you want to make it permanent, what you need to do is you need to edit the Etsy default grub file. So we are going to uh, vim into Etsy default uh, grub. And then down here where it says grub command line Linux default, we are going to add a line to it. And we're going to put in zswap.enabled equals 1 and then write it out. Now when you reboot your computer, it will be enabled automatically. Now there are other parameters that zswap takes. So we can take a look at them if we do a grep and then recursive on all the files in the sys modules zswap parameters. If we take a look at them, we can see that enabled is y. Um, same field pages enabled is why max, max pull percent is 20, the compression algorithm is LZO, and the Z pool is ZBUD. Now, if you wanted to change any of those, you could echo um, 
whatever you wanted to change into it. But if you wanted to make it persistent across boots, you would have to add those changes to the Etsy default grub file again. So if we sudo vim Etsy default grub, and then we come back up here, um, say we want to change the uh, max pull percent and make it 50, we can do zswap dot max underscore underscore uh, pull underscore percent and then make it 50. And then write and quit. And then once you've quit out of it, of course, don't forget to update grub. So you'll run sudo update grub. And now you'll be able to reboot and it will be enabled once it comes back up. So that's what the difference is between ZRAM and ZSwap and how to set them up. But they do have slightly different use cases. For ZSwap, I like to use that on most servers that have a low amount of memory but are attached to NVMe drives or SSDs just because it makes better use of the memory. Um, for devices like Raspberry Pis, I do prefer the ZRAM option because with that, I can completely remove the swap device from the SD card, and it does give it a little more longevity. Remember, if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.